Hi everybody, hope you've been staying safe and well. Um, today we're going to have a look at the uh, fourth question in English language paper two, which if we follow the same model we're looking at paper one, is building upon the skills that we've used for questions one, two and three, and obviously it'd be worth a few more marks as well. Um, with this video I'm going to be using the AQA sample material one, um, so please feel free to uh, download that from the AQA website. Um, it's the J. Rayner and the uh, 19th century uh, public school one. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to present some ideas, I'm going to present some slides, I've done some prep work for this, and then we're going to model a paragraph response to this question. Um, so I hope this is really useful um, and it'll guide you through how to respond to this particular question. So I'll just get this um, slide ready for us. Okay, so when we're looking at this question, obviously it's building upon the ideas that we've done so far on this paper where we've read both of the sources, uh, we've looked at each source separately and looked at different ideas there, um, and now we're going to be combining those, these ideas in terms of language analysis and comparison. So for this question you will need to refer to the whole of source A together with the source B, the father's letter to a family friend, so we're only referring to the father's letter in this instance. Uh, compare how the two writers convey their different attitudes to parenting and education. In your answer you could compare the different attitudes, compare the methods they use, and support your ideas with references to both texts. Well, we know that in reality, if we are being told that we could do something, it's what we should be doing. So we need to look at the different attitudes to parenting that they have, we need to look at the methods they use to show those attitudes, and we need to support our ideas with references to both texts. It's worth 16 marks, so we'll probably spend about 20 minutes on this. It could be worth 20 marks, um, in which case we'll probably spend about 25 minutes on this question, uh, 20 to 25 minutes on this question. So to start with, I've had a look at both texts and I've started to annotate some ideas. So we're looking at this idea of attitudes towards parenting and attitudes towards their children. Uh, so with the source A, I appreciate it's quite small, but the ideas that I've come up with are here. So um, Eddie's quite demanding. Um, for example, uh, we have Eddie saying, announcing in English they're experimenting with food writing. I have to come up with metaphors. Give me a metaphor about this pizza. That's a good example of the relationship they have between them. I've got the fact that um, Eddie feels comfortable and jovial with his father. They grow, grow up, become clever, and remorselessly take the mickey out of you. I have the idea that Jay Rayner tries to understand what it's like to be a 14-year-old child. He says, I decide to show a little solidarity. I will have a go at his maths homework just to get a sense of what it is to be 14 years old, which is quite a, an interesting idea of their relationship. Uh, Jay seems proud of his son. He says, he 20 out of 25 or 80 percent a low score for him me i got 12 out of 25 or less than 50 percent um we've got they said that he's irritatingly good at it um he doesn't labor the point but he's irritatingly good at maths and then finally i've said jay doesn't understand his son's world but allows him to enjoy himself it says he's too busy killing things while talking on skype to his friend theo who is also in the same game trying to kill the same things so overall a very positive relationship and lots of different ways in which that is um, being expressed now, in the second text, when we're looking at Henry's father's letter back to the um, family friend, uh, we've got the fact that Henry's father doesn't really trust him. He says, boys will sometimes complain without cause, uh, and therefore hope you'll excuse the liberty I take in troubling you. So he doesn't trust what Henry's telling him. Uh, we have Henry's father being quite overly critical. Uh, in Henry's letter, I see several words wrong spelt. Um, uh, we have the, he distrusts Henry's opinion. Uh, Henry's principal object is to get home and we all have a great desire to see him but particularly to see George um, he also asks the family friend I would prefer you seeing George if you can and hear what he says as I rely more on the truth of his story um, it seems that Henry's father favours the other brother George because he says George is a great favourite with us all and so he has with his dear the mother who is now no more so overall in this instance we have Henry's father being quite mistrustful of him he doesn't really have that positive relationship. He seems quite cold and he seems quite distant. Whereas with um, the relationship between Jay and his son, Eddie, it seems quite close. It seems quite favourable. It seems quite um, uh, well, well balanced emotionally, if you like. So a good strategy for this question is to jot down some ideas. Now, if you had time, drawing a table is a good idea because you can look at ideas from source A and ideas from source B and then you can link them together. Um, if you don't have a table, even like bullet points and a few ideas might be worth having a look at uh, and just to set out your store about what 
comparisons we can make here. So say, for example, I've got Jay Rayner respects his son. They grow up, they become clever and remorselessly take the mickey out of you. Whereas Henry's father doesn't trust him. Boys will sometimes complain without cause. Okay, now that's an interesting comparison that I could make here. I've got that Jay's empathetic towards his son and tries to understand him. I decide to show a little solidarity. Whereas Henry's father seems critical, cold and distant. I see several words wrong spelt. Jay seems proud of his son. He doesn't labor the point, but he's irritatingly good at it. Uh, whereas Henry's father seems closer to his other son. George is a great favorite with us all. Jay doesn't understand his own son's entertainment. So Theo is ta he's talking to his friend Theo on Skype. Uh, whereas Henry's father trusts strangers more than his son. I will be guided in what you say. So as a response to this question, what we need to be doing, we need to be thinking about comparing the different attitudes, comparing the methods that are used to convey those attitudes and supporting our ideas with references to both texts. So we're going to model a response here, looking at the, uh, the ideas that we've come up with. So the first thing we're looking at is that Jay's Rayner respects his son. He grows up, he becomes clever and remorselessly takes the mickey out of you as my evidence. So we start with uh, what we have here. So... Uh, Within source here. So within source here, it's clear that Jay Rayner has a close relationship with his son built upon um, mutual respect and understanding. And then we need to put our evidence in. They grow up, they become clever and remorselessly take the wiki out of you. So we need to change color because we're gonna embed our evidence. zoom in on specific aspects of language from within this text. So we've got, they grow up, become clever, and remorselessly take the mickey out of you. Now for me, the words that stand out are clever and remorselessly when I think about taking the mickey. So I'm gonna zoom in on those two aspects. So here we see, using the adjective. So here we see Jay using the adjective clever to express his admiration for his son, implying that he's intelligent, confident, and capable in his studies. Likewise, the fact that he uh, remorselessly take the mickey suggests. they have um, and he's an adverb is using humor Very good. So, so far what we have is we've looked at source A and we've explored the three different ideas in which we need to do. We've got a point, we've got some evidence, and we've explored how that evidence is being presented. So within source A, it's clear that Jay Rayner has a close relationship with his son built upon mutual respect and understanding. This is revealed when Jay declares they grow up, become clever, and remorselessly take the mickey out of you. 
Here we see Jay using the adjective clever to express his admiration for his son, implying that he's intelligent, confident, and capable in his studies. Likewise, the fact that he can remorselessly take the mickey suggests they have a close relationship as they have banter and gentle teasing between them both. By using this adverb, Jay Rain is using humour to show how his son has the upper hand in their relationship. Now, we're going to link this to the second source and looking at source B. Now, we have here, boys will sometimes complain without cause. So it's not very respectful, the relationship. So alternatively, could be our contrast at this point in source B. His father shows a black boy. Okay, so the point we've got, alternatively in source B, Henry's father shows a lack of trust and respect for his son, demonstrating that their relationship is colder and more distant. Okay, we now need to embed our evidence. So the quotation we're looking for is, boys will sometimes complain without cause. Henry's father. Again, we need to zoom in on particular aspects here of this quotation. So what I'm going to look at is the idea that he calls him a boy and the fact that he talks about him complaining without cause, or even the alliteration here. So let's have a look. So that would be use. Boy, I'm going to go for adjective as a description in this sense. The adjective boy suggests immaturity so make sure that Valdez himself is superior and that his opinion is much more Harsh alliteration of complain without comments. Something silly which uh, does not need his full attention. If we're reading back this second paragraph, we've got the following. Alternatively, in source B, Henry's father shows a lack of trust and respect for his son, demonstrating that their relationship is colder and more distant. This is suggested when Henry's father laments that boys will sometimes complain without cause. The use of the noun boy suggests an immaturity and that the father sees himself as superior and that his opinion matters much more. Likewise, the harsh alliteration of complain without cause reveals that he sees Henry's complaints as something silly which do not need his full attention. Now, to wrap this up, we'll talk about both texts together. Raw, you can see that here we are. It is some much more built. Overall, we can see that Jay Rayner's relationship with his son is much more built on mutual respect and understanding, whereas Henry's relationship with his father is cold and distant. Apologies, caps lock's not really working very well. So, this is what we're looking for. And ideally, if you've got 25 minutes, we're probably looking at three comparisons if you get that down in time. Um, obviously, look back at the question and look at the bullet points of 
comparing the different attributes so make sure the comparison is there make sure you're including the methods and the language devices that are being used and make sure you are using references from both texts this is a good example of what it should look like okay so just a brief look at the mark scheme we need to look at things that we compare ideas and perspectives in a perceptive way we need to analyze how methods are used we need to use a range of detail from both texts and a detailed understanding of the different texts and the perceptions there so for example jay Rainer uses humor to good effect in the article and he's uh, in both his attitudes to parenting too busy killing things on skype showing his warm relaxed attitude to his son and his attitudes to education um then we've got this is in direct contrast to and how we talk about the second text. So use this video to help you uh, use these ideas here to be able to model how you would look at both texts together. OK, so I'm going to stop that just for now and then I'll come back to you. Hope that's been really, really useful looking at um, question four. Um, obviously, it's quite a difficult question in terms of the length of and the amount of work that you're being asked to do and the fact that you have to refer to both texts. I would recommend doing that table just to plan it out um, in, as a starting point so you can look at your comparisons and look at your ideas. Uh, next video, we're going to have a look at question five, which is your nonfiction writing. Uh, until then, make sure you take care and stay safe.